I give you a couple definitions for love. A uh, common definition that uh, most Americans and people in general are going to identify with is um, uh, profoundly tender, passionate, affectionate affection for another person, a feeling of warm, uh, warm personal attachment or deep affection. Like for your parents or, or a child or a friend. I'm not really. Are you guys turning me off? Yeah, we're trying to turn you off. <laughs> anyway, um, the other, another one I would like to put out is a kind of a deeper definition, and uh, I think it's more biblical. And the concept of love might be love is a commitment to always unselfishly seek the very best for others. Love is a continual choice to treat others in a way that we would like to be treated. It focuses outward rather than inward, and it's selfless. And it's, it's selfless rather than being self-centered. And of course, this world is, you know, me, 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 what makes me happy, that's what we're going to do. But Christ teaches us otherwise in his word. You know, he, he came here for us. He laid down all glory and majesty just to come here and suffer the way he did in this world just for us. For me, I, I can't imagine that. It's hard to imagine. But that's true love. Anyway, recent studies have shown that uh, strong faith and uh, close interpersonal relationships can actually benefit us in our health walk and our um, physical even, even our physical appearance and different things like that. When you're having uh, your mental and emotional um, breakdowns, you know, sometimes uh, it helps to have that close friend or especially the relationship with Christ upward. We need that uh, bond and connection. And, and sometimes he places people, wonderful friends in our lives that sometimes we can't even look up. And he places those friends there to say, look, look, up, look what Christ is doing for us and what he's done for us. Um, some authorities have gone so far as to claim that love is the most powerful healing force. You've heard many times hospitals uh, notice that people who are prayed for um, heal much faster. So it takes a lot of love to to be on your knees a lot for somebody that, that's in need or in the hospital or suffering from depression or something like that that we all have uh, occasional bouts with. Um, when we take our eyes off of our Creator, sometimes we're burdened with those. Um, love expresses itself in many different ways, and uh, some of the ways are compassion, concern, understanding, affection, gratitude, empathy, and nurture, respect, reverence, and trust. And Jesus declared, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Um, this again, going totally outward and not inward. We're looking to the others. And um, Jesus, or um, it was in first, uh, not John 3, 16, it says, God so loved the world that gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And this describes uh, God's loving uh, how loving and God is and how we can trust him. I mean, if he loved us that much, and like I was saying before, it's just inconceivable that he would love us that much. So sometimes, though, in this world, we're surrounded by challenges that are overwhelming us at times, and the things that we're going over here in this wellness, on this wellness chart here, these are simple things that we can do rather than popping a pill to take care of some of these issues, and they're going to bring life and health to us, and hopefully uh, prevent some of the things that are coming on people in these days. So, with uh, all the uncertainty in today's world, faith and trust in the loving in our loving God makes an amazing difference in our overall health. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on to nutrition. Nutrition has quite a little bit more to talk about. Um, I think uh, we're quite fortunate to have an example with love, the ultimate example. I don't know that I can even touch on all of that anyway. That's a huge topic, but uh, as you can tell, we've got a whole big old book on it that's full of it, and I would advise everybody to get closer to that book and our creator. Um, as far as nutrition, uh, you've heard it said that we are what we eat, and many times uh, I've looked in the mirror and I've just said, yeah. That's right. You know, when I was uh, younger, I started with a lot of things, and, and it was because the way I was brought up and the way I ate. And I found out later in life that was what was wrong, you know. So, 
Um, God designed some of the best, or the best foods for us to sustain life and health, and that was in the garden. He gave us fruits, nuts, grains, um, well, and vegetables were added after, after sin. These uh, originally had the perfect balance of vitamins and minerals and proteins and carbohydrates that our body requires. Um, God said, <clears throat> see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of, the, of all the earth, and every tree whose, whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. And that's in Genesis 1.29. So eating food the way God made it restores health to our bodies and rebuilds our cells. And on the other hand, and uh, generally that indicates that it's saturated or trans, uh, trans just means partially hydrogenated fats. So this is uh, the fats that we want to avoid. Um, more healthful fats tend to be liquid at room temperature. It's best to eat most of our fats the way they, act, they occur naturally in nature. And uh, the foods that, um, like if you want to uh, think about it, we, we take the corn and we extract all the oil out of that and then we, we use it in everything. And you're getting that the, not the way God intended it with all the fiber and everything else to, for your body to use. Um, the foods that, the plant foods, also, they don't have very, they're, they're not, uh, they don't have the cholesterol. The plant foods don't have any of the cholesterol. They are also low in fat with the exception of olives or avocados, nuts, and seeds. So um, you can eat those probably if you're having a weight issue, you can eat maybe less of those, but they're good ways to get your fat. Um, proteins, many people consider this the thing that you gotta watch and you gotta make sure it's the most important thing you gotta get. And really, proteins, um, you don't, if you're eating this kind of lifestyle, you really don't have to worry about proteins. Because, uh, I mean, especially if you're eating the legumes and nuts and seeds, uh, you're, you're getting plenty of protein. So that's something you won't have to worry about and count and make sure that that's happening. Um, the proteins are just, they're made from amino acids. And if you think about words, uh, words are made up of a, a combination of various letters, and that's kind of the way the proteins are. They're, they're made up of um, uh, lots, the proteins are made up of lots of amino acids, and they're chained together. Um, I'm, t I'm being told to wrap it up, and I, 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 t I knew that this was going to happen, but anyway. Um, the basic thing with this is you really want to focus on getting all of these things from your plant um, plant life because this was actually designed by the Creator for our body and that's how we're made to take it in. Some of these other things we don't assimilate very well and they will rot in our stomach, especially when you think about the meat products. They're rotting in our stomach because they're taking a longer time to digest and um, they don't have any fiber to move through quickly. So uh, that's something to think about there. Um, there's, I'm going to give you some seven rules here real quick. I'm going to go through them quickly that will, uh, that are good for nutrition. Uh, you want to eat a, a, a plant-based diet, and you want to reduce fat and cholesterol consumption. And some of the ways you can do that is cut down on the consumption of the meat, meat and the fried foods and spreads and dairy products. Uh, you want to reduce your sugar intake. And it's, a, it's amazing. Everyday Americans eat almost double the upper, the upper. Uh, tonight? Wheat germ patties, and wheat germ is really good for you. Has a lot of the B vitamins, and um, it's um, or it helps too. Okay, our first ingredient is one and a half cups of wheat germ, and uh, you can. Purchase this in a jar or even this, and this has just recently come out. It's uh, it's non-GMO, and uh, it takes one and a half cups of wheat germ and one cup of the quick oats. A half a cup of chopped uh, pecans. measured out. Um, 
I'm using Himalayan sea salt and it's really good for you. It has like 89 minerals in it. And one clove of chopped garlic. I like garlic, so I did put two, two cloves in there. And one medium onion. And it's on page 72 of the book. stay together whenever you yeah, really well you know, to make time. Yeah. Pour a little bit of olive oil. I use olive oil. And I like to use the light and uh, it doesn't have a strong taste as the extra virgin. blood pressure and it's good for the nervous system too. If you can look up on Google and, and uh, search for um, benefits of uh, wheat germ, it'll tell you a lot about it. wheat germ, uh, but it doesn't last very long. You have to refrigerate it, and it goes rancid real easily. So I just usually use the toasted the way it comes. And that's basically it, I guess. But they're real tasty. You'll taste them on the buffet tonight. Everything frozen it that is key because a green hot smoothie does not taste good so I'm going to do one handful of kale um, I'm going to do one handful of collars it's okay 
going to blend this real quick and then I'm going to finish it off with the spinach. Now for those of you that are thinking about green, I have something to tell you. trying to knock it down real quick so I can get more in there but then we'll blend it smooth. The thing about the bottom mixer is it gets it so smooth. Smooth as a milkshake and no other blender that I know of except for I think the blend set does that. <laughs> so um yeah uh, green smooth this one's starting to fall. Green smoothie girl says either one she loves. I think just different ones do different things. The only bad thing about this is it's a vortex, so down at the bottom when you're doing stuff like the beans and stuff, you, you know, you just got to get down to the bottom to scrape it out. That's the only thing. But other than that, I, I could not live without. Yeah, it, soup while you're mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it does, yeah. I have a wonderful tomato roll soup that I do in this. I mean, to eat the soup. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to use the rest of it to just hold. I'm just going to get it down. I'm going to give it about five cups. When you're first starting out or you have, you know, your kids or whatever, you can do less greens and more fruit until they get used to it. This is even great for babies. I mean, they love it. and you look at the trees, the leaves, green means life, and um, brown is dead, you know, dying. You want green, green means go, <laughs> green means grow, and green means dough, <laughs> money, dough. <laughs> so green is good, but I know that some of you are like green. It is easy being green, uh, unlike Kermit the Frog. Um, but uh, some people have, I don't know, I know kids and some husbands are picky eaters and even some, some women that just like, I cannot do with green. So the one, I have another one that I made and all I did is got everything that this one has, um, but I added blueberries. And if you add enough blueberries, it turns to purple and you never know that all the collars and spinach and kale is in there. And um, it, it's wonderful. So y'all can try either one tonight. <laughs> I'll probably here and just show you this, how thick that is. You, you know, don't want that. So you keep going until you get it really smooth. I want this to go about a minute. That's really what you want. You're almost like a, like a, like a water, but a little thicker, like a milkshake. That's perfect right there, and that's key because <laughs> you do not want to feel that going down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to feel weeds going down. <laughs> and it's going down smooth. <laughs> and texture does have a lot to do with taste somehow. I haven't figured that out. But um, the other thing is that all you're not going to believe how good this tastes because you have no sugar. I mean, have a little bit of stevia, which I know y'all probably know about stevia. It's all natural, good for diabetics. It's actually a leaf that they um, grind up, and it's not like your aspartame or any of your chemical sweeteners. It's totally natural. Um, 
But the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to put these apples in here. Um, I like to go ahead and get all my apples cut. You can, I love this thing. I, I'm not into kitchen gadgets, but because I'm just like the fastest thing. But th these, these things are indispensable. And you just push it down and it cores and cuts, cuts at the same time. And so I bring my bag of apples in from the store. And either me or my kids, I will get them to go ahead and do them and throw them in these bags and throw them in the freezer. And with the Vitamix, it's so awesome that you just, you don't even have to throw the cores away. So you keep that, it grinds all the seeds and everything. So and you don't even need a juicer. <laughs> no, mm -mm, not for this. And uh, I used to, mm-hmm, and you're going to drink it, and you're not even going to know it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to do about half at a time, and then I'm going to fill up, top the rest of it off of it. So you've got plenty of sweetener in there. And I, when I first tried one of these, it was good, no doubt. But after I had, you know, it kind of like turns your taste buds on. And as your taste buds get turned on, you rip. I'm like, this is breakfast for me. This is like a milkshake. And I 